Hey gang, and welcome to the Worksheet Solutions Walkthrough for the Worksheet, Physical Properties and Basic Synthesis of Alcohols. Okay gang, now that we've conquered substitution and elimination, now you'll see we're going to be tackling different functional groups in organic chemistry, the first of which being alcohols. So, you've started your alcohol-related functional group journey, you're here for answers, don't let me stop you, let's look at the Worksheet. Okay gang, let's tackle problem one. So in problem one, we have A, B, and C. So starting with A, the first thing we're tasked with doing is given these four structures right here, we need to rank from one to four, one being the lowest boiling point, four being the highest, which of these structures has the lowest uh, to highest boiling points. So remember, with boiling point, right, when you raise the temperature of whatever you're dealing with, you're breaking up, you're heating up whatever you know mixture you have, you are breaking down intermolecular forces, right? The forces between different molecules. So things like uh, dispersion forces, uh, dipole effect, and hydrogen bonding are what we're considering. So I hope you can see right off the bat, this you know, butane, it's got nothing really going for except for dispersion forces. So butane is a regular one, the, the lowest for all the boiling points. Because now what we're dealing with here, uh, I hope you can see we have hydrogen bonding going on here and hydrogen bonding going on there. Those are the strongest intermolecular forces. The next thing we kind of have going on in acetone is this dipole effect, right? This is polar, a apolar molecule. So that clocks in at the second boiling point. And I hope you're seeing that these structures right here, uh, you know, sec butyl alcohol and uh, isopropanol, they both can hide uh, hydrogen bond in the same way, right? They have the hydrobonic sites of these two lone pairs of the oxygen, and then they also have that of the hydrogen itself. So three locations, three sites for hydrogen bonding. However, it's like butyl alcohol is a little bit heavier. So three for that and four for sec butyl alcohol. All right, so now for B, we just need to label the acids and bases in these reactions, right? These are gonna go to completion, so in this structure, this is also to highlight the dual nature of al alcohols being able to act as a, both a base and an, uh, uh, an acid. So in this reaction right here, we can see an alcohol, this alcohol is losing H plus, it's being abstracted by NH2 minus. So this is the acid, this is the base, but in this letter, uh, this problem right here, we can see the alcohol is picking up H plus. So this is the base, and HBr, no surprise, is the acid. So C is just to, you know, what's the word for this dual behavior that alcohols and other things can exhibit? When something can act as both an acid and a base, that means it is amphoteric. Okay, that's all for problem one. On to two. Okay, gang, so in problem two, we are tasked with either filling in the reagent or providing starting material in these uh, alcohol synthesis reactions. You're gonna see very soon when we start synthesis problems, you might need to do very simple transformations to create an alcohol. So you might be posed with different situations where SN1 makes the most sense to do, uh, you know, the, the pathway to produce your alcohol or SN2. So that's what this problem was geared at, uh, you know, illustrating. So in this problem above, we have a secondary substrate with a good leaving group. So we need to produce an alcohol here. So could we use sodium hydroxide or just, you know, basically hydroxide? Yes, but we're in that weird secondary situation. And OH minus is, you know, an intermediate base and an intermediate nucleophile. So we're going to get a weird mixture of elimination, you know, E2 and SN2. But if we use something like H2O, then we completely avoid that situation. We will all, you know, pr you know E1 is that little minor product. However, if we use low temperature, we'll have a great conversion of creating a carbocation here and attacking with water to produce the alcohol we want. So this is a good situation for SN1. Okay, moving on to the second problem. We can see that we have a primary substrate and a good leaving group. So because it's primary, right, very not sterically encumbered, we can absolutely do SN2 and use, you know, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, whatever you want to use, but we can absolutely do an SN2 pathway here. It's safe. We're not really risking the competition with E2 here. Now, down here, so, so I hope you're seeing the pattern. The more substituted you are, the safer it is to do it with SN1, but the less substituted you are, primary methyl, use SN2. So in this 
problem right here. You can see the alcohol is a tertiary alcohol, very substituted. So a really nice, easy way to do this would be provide a reactant like this. You can use any, you know, chlorine, tosylate. I just happen to use this, you know, this is just a good leaving group. But I hope you're seeing that the good leaving group is on the tertiary position. We're doing SN1 because we're gonna form a carbocation here. It's not going to rearrange anywhere, so we're good there. And we will have a great conversion of making the alcohol. On the other hand, if we look back down, if we look here, we have isobutyl alcohol, right? And this is a primary alcohol. So I hope what you're thinking, oh, and obviously we have sodium hydroxide, right? So, and we were given water above, sodium hydroxide down here, so we just need to provide a good situation that SN2 would work in, and you can, you know, again, use chlorine, iodine, bromine, whatever you want to use, tosylate, whatever. So I hope problem two was a breeze on to three. Okay, gang, to round out this worksheet, we have eight complete the reaction questions regarding oxidation and reduction. So remember, when, just to pick out a few things here, remember, when we oxidize with sodium dichromate and H2SO4, or commonly known as the Jones reagents, you're going to oxidize the alcohol, that bad boy, as much as you can. So primary alcohols go to carboxylic acids, and anything else will go to like a, a ketone. If you have PCC on a primary alcohol, it's gonna only stop at an al it will stop at an aldehyde, but it, if not, it'll you know oxidize to a ketone. Um, and then remember LA, LAH or lithium aluminum hydride and acidic workup as well as NABH4 and ethanol are going to uh, reduce your ketones and aldehydes back to alcohols. Okay, so uh, and remember the rule being you can al uh, you can oxidize an alcohol as long as you have a hydrogen present, at least one, right? Okay, so in this first problem, we have the Jones reagents, we have the, excuse me, uh, sodium dichromate and H2SO4, primary alcohol. So we are going to oxidize that alcohol as much as we can, more bonds to oxygen for that carbon, which means we are gonna go all the way to the carboxylic acid, okay? And then in the second problem, we have PCC. Now this isn't a primary alcohol, so we're just gonna do what we can. We have one hydrogen available, so PCC is going to replace that bond to hydrogen to make that secondary alcohol a ketone. In this problem, uh, the third one, we have uh, sodium, uh, excuse me, NaBH4 and ethanol. So we will take that ketone down to a secondary alcohol, okay? And then me being trying to be a little tricky, a little, little shifty in this last problem, right? This is a tertiary alcohol. We have no bonds to hydrogen. So, can we oxidize this alcohol? No, there's no bonds to remove from hydrogen to convert to more bonds to oxygen. So this is a no reaction. Or, if you want, uh, you know, no, uh, no reaction, this thing is just gonna sit the way it is. Nothing is going to happen here. No reaction is plenty to signify that you know what's going on. Remember, you can't oxidize a tertiary alcohol. Okay, gang, let me erase this. Four more, and we're done. Okay, gang, last four, let go. All right, so if we look at this problem up top, we can see we have an aldehyde and we have the conditions for a reduction, right? Lithium aluminum hydride with acidic workup. So remember, that'll just bump this aldehyde down to the primary alcohol it probably came from. All right, one, two, three, one, two, three, alcohol. Second problem, we see we have a primary alcohol right here. And so we know Jones would take this all the way to a carboxylic acid. However, PCC, a more mild oxidizing uh, reagent we would use, right, stops at the aldehyde. So let me make sure I draw the correct number of carbons. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. Uh, it's on one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Yep. There we go. Counting is the hardest part, I'm telling you. All right, so this one, we have a little bit of a multi-stepper. So secondary uh, alkyl halide. So in this first step, we're gonna be doing SN1. So when you have mul multiple steps, which we will in this, this last one, I like to, in the kind of the margins, this is what we'll have after the first step, right? We'll have isopropyl alcohol, and then we can oxidize that, right, in step two, to a ketone. There we go. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna be using the space over here. So let's take this one step at a time, all right? So the first step, we're gonna be doing, uh, oh, and I really should have put this light. 
So free radical halogenation on the first one. So remember, chlorine's less picky. So we will put a chlorine on one of the primary carbons here in isobutane. So we'll get isobutyl chloride. Second step, NaOH. So I hope you're seeing NaOH in a primary carbon with a good leaving group. We will be doing SN2. So we will replace the chlorine with an OH. Step three, we're gonna oxidize that to a, uh, since it's a primary alcohol, we're using PCC, an aldehyde. Okay? Four and five, we're doing a reduction. So four and five actually undo three. So four and five mean we actually go back to that primary alcohol. So our final product is this right there. Okay, gang, you're gonna see these reactions are going to become super handy when we introduce the Grignard reaction as well as all the other reactions we have coming for alkenes and alkynes and doing all types of synthesis fun. If you're watching this video, that means you've supported Joe Chem, you've thrown some money my way and I appreciate that so much. I hope this website is everything you hoped it would be in, in terms of uh, helping you succeed in organic chemistry. I'm happy you're using it right now, and I hope you're using it all the way to the end of your organic chemistry career. But if anything, I hope to see you all in the next video.